And um, this month, I, I chose a quote, as I have been over recent months, um, to, to explore a little bit. And this is a quote that comes from Franz Kafka. And he said this, you do not need to leave your room. Remain sitting at your table and listen. Do not even listen, simply wait. Be quiet, still and solitary. The world will freely offer itself to you to be unmasked. It has no choice. It will roll in ecstasy at your feet. So um, my reason for, for choosing this, this particular quote is I think it expresses uh, a couple of attitudinal foundations of mindfulness really well, and also uh, a fruition of mindfulness practice. The first attitudinal foundation that it expresses is non-striving. And um, what does non-striving really mean? Well, um, when it comes to meditation, it means the view that what we need, and maybe even what we seek, is already here. So um, actually, there's no seeking to be done, which sounds a little strange because, I mean, who would come to meditation practice or indeed any other activity unless they were wanting something from it? It's, um, it's sometimes kind of described as being akin to dancing, um, where um, the point of the dance is not to get to a particular place on the dance floor, it's not to get to the end of the dance. It's the process of dancing itself. So meditation is similar in that um, the process of, of um, discovery of what's here is already the fruition of the practice. So if we notice the, you know, the thoughts say that um, I want to be calm, that noticing of that thought is already mindfulness. And um, you might, might have discovered, those of you who've, who've practiced for a while, that there's a, a, a distinction between um, a thought and noticing a thought. So when we're identified with a thought, something like, um, you know, I, uh, I want to relax, can kind of take us over, like, because we compare it to the present moment. And if we're saying, I want to be relaxed, the implication of that is I'm not relaxed. And if I'm not relaxed, ooh, there must be something to sort out then. I've got to get relaxed. I really want to be relaxed. And yet it's not here. So it activates um, our discrepancy monitor, which is there and kind of brings out the uh, physiology and psychology of what we sometimes call the doing driven mode of mind, of trying to get somewhere else, of always struggling to be not where we are at the moment. And that's what we drop in mindfulness practice. There's kind of paradox of, of not trying to get anywhere um, and actually discovering maybe that what we need and what we seek is already here. So this is kind of the first line of Kafka's quote, you do not need to leave your room. You don't need to go anywhere. You can remain sitting at your table and listen. In fact, you can just wait. So the only kind of need is to stop the um, the identification with whatever thought is driving us, whatever emotion is driving us, body sensation, impulse, habit formation. It doesn't mean that they don't arise either. You know, we can, those, those thoughts can still be around, feelings can still be around, urges can still be around. But we change our place of relationship to it like a 180 degree shift we go instead of like you know if you imagine i'm kind of like you know here i am identifying from my thoughts somewhere at the i don't know back of my head maybe when we practice mindfulness it's like coming and actually doing this it's a 180 degree shift and go oh look at that thought i want this or i wish it wasn't that or um could somebody please get me a this 
And we see that and go, oh, there's a thought happening here. And quite often the discovery of being able to um, make that, what John Kabat-Zinn calls an orthogonal relation, uh, rotation in consciousness, um, enables actually there to be um, less activation of that struggle that comes from identifying with the thought of wanting things to be other than where they are. So this is when non-striving comes in as an attitudinal foundation and actually letting go of um, letting go of the hanging on to wanting something else in this moment, because this moment is exactly what it is. That's inevitable. So it, it turns out to be counterproductive. That doesn't mean, of course, that we can't make, you know, kind of, um, we can't walk a path and that things can change and that we can influence our situation. But that there's this starting point of non-striving, which is a very different starting point to the one that we usually take when it comes to virtually everything, whether it's inner experience or outer experience. So this quality of actually, you don't need to go anywhere. You can stay. You can wait, you can watch. Um, and when we wait and watch, we get access to the full present moment as it is, including thoughts, urges, sensations, emotions, including ones maybe we don't want. But if we can let go of the wanting, or at least recognize it as wanting. Maybe we can't let go of the wanting, that's fine. You just recognize the wanting as wanting, then a, a, a new relationship is, um, is cultivated. And, and actually this is, um, you know, this is the kind of the jewel. Um, R.S. Thomas calls it the, the pearl of great price. And actually Rumi uses a similar analogy, he kind of talks about it being a, um, kind of that we spend our whole time kind of like in the workshop, um, kind of making bad clothing is the analogy he uses, We're kind of weaving bad clothing, you know, over and over. And actually there's this amazing precious jewel underneath the floorboards that we never go down to look for. So when we stop and actually tune ourselves into the world, it's like discovering that, that jewel. Because this is human being, full human being, and it's usually covered by um, by our, our striving for whatever it is we don't like about our current situation and want to be different in our future situation. So non-striving, one one attitude that's um, uh, spoken to in this quote. The second one is appreciation. Um, it's quite an interesting image, isn't it? That the um, uh, the world will freely offer itself to you to be unmasked. It has no choice. It will roll in ecstasy at your feet. The world will roll in ecstasy at your feet. Um, I think I, I misinterpreted this for a while um, by somehow kind of imagining that um, I had to experience some of this ecstasy uh, while it was doing its rolling. Um, and, and that's not always the case. Like we don't always necessarily feel that the way the world is rolling leaves us in a state of joy. Sometimes it, it can, and that's wonderful when that happens, but um, it may not be ecstasy kind of for us in a particular moment. However, if we can recognize that it's actually the world's kind of rolling, you know, and um, that maybe all phenomena, even the difficult ones, uh, can be the play of the phenomenal world. Um, which, by the way, is really difficult to do, you know, because there's plenty of stuff that happens that, that um, is very difficult for us to see in that way. Um, but if it's something we can practice, then there's a possibility of, of kind of um, accessing a receptive, accepting, even appreciative relationship to whatever it is that we're given. And even in the, the perhaps the hardest circumstances, there are often silver linings. So when we're drawn towards the difficult and the negative of what's going on, because part of our minds wants to change it, maybe we lose track very often, lose sight of what's okay. Even if it's just this breath that we're breathing, 
you know, or being in a body, or our everyday relationships, or water, or food, or light, or uh, grass, or the internet, or language, um, the planet. Easy to lose sight of the um, the kind of what we habituate to. So this sense of actually really listening and looking at what's here and the, the remarkableness of the very rolling itself of the world. So, um, so appreciation, especially of the neutral, or the seemingly neutral in our lives, that we, we tend not to notice. Can we bring a sense of actually what's okay here right now? even in the midst of whatever difficulties we might be experiencing. Um, and this is available, yeah? Kafka says it's freely offered, freely offered to us, but it requires an unmasking by our willingness to pause, a willingness to lean in and truly sense what's happening. Um, and uh, there's, a, there's a rather nice byproduct of all of this. Um, which is that we, we get to experience um, the unfolding of our lives. Sometimes we might miss great chunks of our lives that are potentially enjoyable. And sometimes we might miss the patterns and habits of mind that are um, perhaps uh, limiting us, such as believing in certain thought patterns or um, being caught up in particular emotional uh, reactivities. So actually by, by meeting and coming to understand experientially how we roll in the world, we get a lot more choice about, about what we choose to do or not do over time. So, um, so curiously, this kind of quote suggests that, that you know, nothing is needed. And in one sense, that's true. Um, it's just being, just sitting in a room, being still, listening, looking, watching the world roll, watching our rolling. Um, actually, it's an expression of non-striving, which is a, a radical um, undoing of the usual way that we meet uh, experience. It enables appreciation and it also um, kind of turns on the, the, the tap potentially of, of wisdom uh, as we connect with our life as it is at this moment. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna say about it. Um, how do you practice it? Is it really just as simple as um, remaining sitting at your table and listening, being quiet, still and solitary? Uh, yes. Uh, however, um, many of us need a bit of um, support to uh, remember how to do this. So this is where meditation practice comes in and potentially guided meditation practice. So uh, I invite you to join me in a, in a guided meditation practice. Uh, intended to uh, help us into the experience of what um, what's being described here. So if you'd like to join me, you're very welcome. This is, of course, invitational, so nobody is uh, obliged to do anything that they don't feel is um, what their mind and body needs just now. So please do take care of yourselves. So there is um, nothing that you need to gain from this practice. You are as you are just now, and from the perspective of meditation, that is completely enough.
So let it go into whatever your experience is. And at the same time, there are some ways in which it can be helpful to uh, support this in this being with what's here in a mindful way, in a non-striving way. It can be quite helpful to have a sense of anchoring. So to anchor, we can maybe feel our feet on the ground, our bodies sitting, if we're sitting on the chair, or whatever it's we're seated on. And not needing to think about our bodies, but just to just to f- feel whatever's here to be felt. Kafka doesn't say think about the world. It's experiencing. So inviting a listening to your experience, sense of receptive opening to whatever's going on. There might be a million thoughts going through your mind. It might be um, pain or pleasure. An urge to do something. It's completely normal. Just for now, seeing what it's like to stay Like we might be talking to a puppy, stay. Just in this moment, stay. And watch, watch the unfolding of your own inner experience. If there are thoughts flying around, can you watch them? If there are emotions happening, can you attune to them and receive them? If there are other bodily experiences, can you bring your curiosity to the experience of them as they're happening now, gently? And for now, we're following the the advice uh, not to leave our room, but to remain sitting and wait and let our inner world offer itself to us.
remembering that we can uh, come back to um, come back to anchor at any point. So we can come back to the sense perhaps of our feet on the ground or the bottom of the chair, or if we like our breath, the feeling of breathing moving in and out of the belly. If it's helpful, you can place a hand on the belly or um, down by your side, just to center your experience. Whatever is happening currently, it's uh, remarkable to be experiencing consciously. So whether or not it's possible to appreciate what's coming up, whether you're liking it or not liking it, and that's not so important when it comes to mindfulness practice. Is it possible to bring a sense of warm-hearted appreciation for your mind-body itself? If there are any difficult experiences, it may be a quality of compassion to, to be bringing. If the experiences are pleasant, then maybe it's more a sense of um, going with the rolling in ecstasy. You are exactly as you are, and the world is exactly as it is just now. And for once, <clears throat> letting that be okay. Just moment by moment. a series of once's. Noticing, too, any reactions uh, to your experience, any uh, wanting more of or less of what's here. Not needing to make that right or wrong either, but to bring curiosity and to see it as further manifestation of, of rolling, the rolling planes of the present moment.
And again, remembering that at any time you can choose to bring your attention back to um, a single anchor place in the body. Kind of touching home and then expanding out when it feels like it might be time to open up to the whole again. Now inviting you to open up um, beyond the body, opening up to sounds. If you imagine that you're um, switching your ears on and Right now, they're receiving sounds or spaces between sounds. And you're not in charge of which sounds come. So letting go of that, uh, any need to control and just to receive. And be curious as to the fluctuating nature of auditory experience. How can you bring the same intention to thoughts? Sometimes this is uh, trickier. But all that we're practicing is uh, relating to thoughts in the same way as we just did with sounds. Just to see them as um, arising phenomena mental events passing through and not needing to identify with them as good or bad or right or wrong, not needing to get rid of any, not needing to try and generate any, but just to watch play of uh, thinking. Now, if our attention wanders into thinking, we can just notice that that's happened and come back to watching. As soon as we've noticed we were caught up in a thought, we are actually back in mindful awareness. knowing that you can choose to re-anchor to 
the body, breath, hands, feet at any point. Just letting be. And if you like a sense now of uh, just letting go of any particular focus and opening up to everything. The sounds can come in, thoughts can come in. Bodily movements and fluctuations of sensation. all met here as best we can as the rolling of our inner and outer world, coming up as our experience moment by moment and bringing a sense of friendliness to this as best we can. Sense of, ah, yeah, here's the, the world rolling, rolling around. And as we choose to sit with it and be, we are cultivating the skill of steadiness amongst others, patience, non-striving. Returning now to our original sense of 
um, anchoring. So, and uh, deliberate directing of attention to a particular place in our body, whether that's our breathing or the sense of sitting here, the bottom on the chair, feet on the ground, just returning to anchor and letting everything else now be in the background. Coming home to the center of our being. And the world's uh, rolling around can be in the background, however it manifests. And lightly touching in, but still non-striving, not trying to make anything happen or unhappen. And offering uh, ourselves an unconditional love, completely unconditional acceptance, just as we are. With all of the stuff that goes on. Loving our humanity with all of its quirks and flaws and uh, brilliances. Feel free to have a stretch or a shift posture in a way that supports your body. Not that you couldn't before, by the way. It's always a uh, option during meditation practice to move if you need to move, to stretch, to listen to your body's needs, your mind's needs. So uh, let's only open up um, the small rooms again, uh, some different ones this time. So people may be in uh, some different configurations, uh, inviting reflections on, um, uh, on the quote, or more generally the themes of um, non-striving and uh, appreciation of, of what's here, and maybe the wisdom that comes from that, and your um, your experience of the um, of the practice itself, anything that came out of that, any uh, insights, um, difficulties, um, reflections, and we'll come back together as a, a larger group in uh, about about eight minutes or so.